Hey everybody and welcome to the third video where we will continue texturing the model that we created in the previous two videos. So in case you haven't watched those, go ahead and check them out. So this is what we will be trying to do this uh, time around and uh, actually create something similar to this. As you can see, this is a welding made on a, not a model, but this is an actual uh, real world uh, model or a real world object and we can see that once you're done with the welding they've actually had to sand down some of the uh, um, the metal on the sides we have some uh, discoloring here based on the actual uh, welding and the temperature so we have some uh, different colors so we're going to see how we can get all of that inside on our model so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go over click a new and choose a template on which I want to work. If we're going to be using this model to import it into maybe Unreal Engine 4, you would want to go with the metallic roughness workflow. If you want to uh, go ahead and texture this thing just so you can bring it down and render it out uh, with maybe uh, V-Ray, you would probably want to go down and choose a specular glossiness workflow. In this case, I'm just going to stick with metallic roughness and the doc document resolution we can change on the fly so this is basically what you will be seeing in the viewport so i'm just going to put it on 2k for now so i'm going to click on file and choose my low level or uh yeah the low poly model that we uh exported out previously from 3ds max so i'm going to click ok and ok all right right away i can see the model is inside substance painter so i can start prepping this thing for uh texturing now one of the things that we did prepare and while we were still inside uh, 3ds max is we applied different materials to the actual seat and a different material to the metal legs so what happens here is that if you go over here where it says texture set list and you click on it you're going to see that we have two textures now or two texture sets which allows me to get over here and click individually on on those little eye icons and i can hide that element that that uh, particular texture set has been uh, placed on in this case that will allow me to see the underlying uh, geometry here so i can go ahead and model on it as well or not model but texture on it without this seat being in the way all right so i'm going to put it over to the side show them both and the first thing that we do want to do is we want to go ahead and bake the textures from the high poly model over down to the low poly model. The way we do that is we're going to go over here with this texture set settings and I can turn this thing off over here. Now we have this button where it says bake mesh maps. Just click on it and this will give us the options for the baker. Now in the common parameters here, the output size, I want to put this thing to 4K. So this is going to give me a 4K resolution. I want to choose my high poly version. So I'm going to click on this button and select the high poly. And now the important part here is since we have a proper naming convention, we're going to go over where it says high poly mesh suffix. And we're going to go underscore HP because that's how we named it. And here we're going to have an underscore LP. And here we also want to go from the match. We're going to get it down to mesh name. So we're going to not going to change anything else at the moment. And I'm going to hit on bake all texture sets. So I'm going to click here and I'll be back as soon as the uh, baking is finished. And a couple of minutes, uh, well, not a couple of minutes, but a minute or so later, the baking is finished. And now we have all the information from the high poly baked down to the low poly model. But now here is the one thing that we do need to take a look at. So if I hide the seat, we're going to see that we have some issues over here. Namely, over here where we basically have the seat touching the metal frame. We have this white discoloration, same thing over here. So basically it's like a shadow that is casting 
anywhere where the seat is about to uh, touch the uh, metal piece or the metal frame. Now the reason for this is very simple to fix and the reason is because the ambient occlusion here is being baked even though that both of these elements have a different uh, texture set. In order to fix that or make sure that this doesn't happen what you want to do is you, when you go over in the ambient occlusion over here you go over and the self occlusion you go only same mesh name option this will fix that issue so once you actually uh, do this I'm just gonna rebake everything and I'll be back as soon as this thing is finished and as soon as the baking is finished, we can see that we no longer have that issue and everything is very clean. So when we turn on the seat now, we know we'll have that. But if I go over here and I hide the metal frame, you're going to see that we still have that same issue happening. But this time around, it's on the seat. All right. And the way to fix this is you go over and select the material for the seat. Then open up the mesh material and do the same thing with the ambient occlusion just make sure you, you know, check the self occlusion to same mesh uh, name and bake all the texture sets and now i can see that there is no longer any issues on the seat with that occlusion and if i hide uh, the seat and unhide the metal frame you can see that we have a clean bake as well on the metal frame as well as on the seat all right, so with that said, now we can actually get down to doing the actual texturing for this model. What I'm going to do for this thing uh, at first is I'm going to put the texture set list thing on the side as well as the settings for this because I will not need them at the moment. And now, before we start texturing anything, it's always a great thing to have your reference image on the side so you can visually see what you're doing and hopefully break this thing down into its uh, most uh, easy to define elements now first things first if we take a look at here we're going to see that we have this basic uh, brass look over here so this is the color this is brass so let's create that as the core beginning on this thing now, for this, I don't have to start from nothing. Namely, I can get down here and maybe choose something from either the materials or the smart materials. In this case, I'm going to go with the bronze. And I'm going to take this bronze armor, put it over here. Delete the layer that's above it. And we start off with something like this. Now, this is a bit too... Well, let's call it distressed and damaged. And if we take a look at this thing, we're going to see it's very smooth. No damages whatsoever. Now, the great thing about using the smart materials is that if you open the folder, you're going to see everything that uh, basically makes this material. So turning on the uh, sharper, sharpen will give us a bit of a smoother look. Turning off the edges, uh, the damages. We'll get rid of that. The surface details will give us a bit of uh, imperfection, which might be okay, but in this case, we really don't even want that. So by deleting that, we can turn it, uh, turn off the dirt, and we have a bare brass uh, material. So what I'm going to do is select all of these guys like this. Click on delete. There we go. So what we are left with is just the base metal. Now, the great thing about this is that we can even change the color for this thing. And the great, another great thing is that by clicking on this eye picker, you can just hold down and whatever your mouse goes on the screen that you have, uh, in this case on my other screen, I can sample the color of this uh, area here and that will transfer all the information over here. So what happens now is I basically have that same exact color being transferred over. Great. So I can collapse this and I can name this material as base metal. All right. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to address the discoloring here that you would see 
from the actual welding or the arc, uh, arc welder temperature. It looks like a burn and the fact that it's a burn basically makes this thing to have this greenish color, this uh, reddish hue and the other yellow color. So actually before I go and do that, the only thing that I'm going to change is probably make this thing just a little bit uh, less shiny. And the way to do it is just increase the roughness. There we go, something like maybe here. There we go. Like this. All right. So the next thing I want to do, like I said, is add in another layer. Well, not inside the base metal, but just another layer on top. All right. Add another layer. There we go. And in here, I want to choose the color for this layer. I'm going to cho choose my eye picker and go over to the green color over here that we have from uh, this piece. Well, actually, instead of just using a normal layer, let's go ahead and uh, add a fill layer because that will fill up the entire uh, scene like this. And again, do the same thing. I'll picker, choose the green color. Just take a bit like this. And now I'm going to add a black mask to this. Now on, on top of this black mask, what I want to do is I want to add a filter. This filter or this mask can either be a smart mask like this, or we can add a generator. Well, in this case, um, on the Twitch stream, I think that the one that we used was one of the occlusion ones. So let's go ahead and add that thing and see how the mask is going to look. There we go. So this is the occlusion strong. And what this will do, it's going to add that color in the corners here. Now, I'm going to reduce the curvature or increase the curvature depending on uh, the result. So let's find it, just scroll down and decrease the balance. And right away you can see that over here we can see this color appearing. And that's more or less what I wanna see. So now I just need to play around with the uh, sliders until I find something that works for me. Let's see the curvature now. Oh, I'm going to try the global balance. There we go. So now the global balance will give me more or less of what I need. The global contrast will basically contain it more towards the effect like this. All right. So I have that color in every place where it's basically two pipes getting together and that's okay. But at the same time, I kind of have that issue because I has, I can see that I have these little specks all over the place since I don't really need that or I don't want that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and add another uh, effect as a paint layer. So this paint layer will now allow me to basically go in and paint in where I want this color to be seen. And instead of white, if I go to black, I can just go in and manually delete or erase any specs that I don't like. You hear maybe like this. So if we just spend just a bit of time to clean up the model, and we can make sure that this effect only appears where we want it to uh, be, which is basically around the corners. So anywhere you have something like this, you can just go in and manually delete that information. There we go. And at certain points like this, maybe a bit too exaggerated, just rein it in delete it down. All right. So once we have the green color, 
what we want to do now is again uh, like i said just go ahead clean up the rest of what you're uh seeing here like all of these uh, small specs but since we don't want to do that in this case at least what i'm going to do is just select uh, this layer name it just give it a, a name go green color i'm going to right click on it and i will make another copy of this so i can duplicate the layer and this time around i want this thing to uh, have a yellow color so over here change the color and overlay it to the yellow or the red and yellow something like this again i'm choosing the color from uh, this palette and now what I want to do is go over back into my mask editor and just decrease the curvature here. Or not the curvature, but the global balance, I think. Yep, the global balance will basically rein in that effect. And you're going to notice since the green color is underneath our uh, new yellow color, so let's just call this. We can now see the overlaying yellow and underneath we still have the green color showing up, which is more or less what we wanted to have as an effect. And I'm going to get to create just one more uh, duplicate of this. And I'm going to call this uh, red color. Change the hue again and pick the reddish color here that's kind of hard to uh, get it but let's go ahead and manually rename this thing and discolor it remove yeah i think this is going to be close enough okay so now in the mask editor, I can choose to uh, break this thing down either by changing any of the options for the textures or just uh, further playing with the either the contrast here like this or changing with the uh, balance. There we go, something maybe like this. All right, so we have the coloring in so now what we do need to address is the actual physical look of the welding as well as this scraping on the sides of this uh, chair there we go so now the only thing that i can see that we might uh, want to do is split this into another video because we've been going on for another 20 minutes so I hope you guys had fun with this one and you managed to learn something new. If you enjoyed the video, then click the like button. And also, if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to su support me and the channel, the support links are below in the description of the video. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video where we will finish up this model. Peace.